I'm excited about today. You, you know, I, I, I know the Lord spoke to me concerning this message. And uh, I want you to get your Bible out if, if you got one. If you don't, the words will, will be up here pretty shortly. But we're going to, we have a lot of other scriptures, but I just want you to turn to Luke chapter 15. And we're going to stay, you can keep your Bible open right there. We'll give some other references to that. And some place during this message right here is going to be where you live. You, you, you know, everybody, everybody usually looked at it and think, well, we're talking about the prodigal son. Yeah, we're going to talk about him, but he's just one of the main players in there. The main player in that is the father. Let me try that again. I said the main player in this is the father. And, and, and then, then there's the elder brother, and, and I, I think the elder brother is pretty well represented by the church at, and, and lar at large. So, so we're going we're gonna to come down through this, and we're going to preach, I hope, till we get done. And, and if, if somebody falls out, and there's no windows if you fall out here. You, somebody will pray over you if, if we don't finish. But again, I'm honored you're here, but I don't think it's happenstance. There's a lot of folks going through a lot of things, and, and, and right here is what we need to get us through whatever it is. And, and if you didn't get anything else, like I say, you already know that the God is the same and he's with you. He, he was with the he, three Hebrew boys when they was in the, in the fiery furnace. He was with them when they were walking through the Red Sea. And, and I want to tell you something else about coming to God. You can come to God in any state of mind. You can come to him when you're mad and you can come to God and he'll receive you. You can come to him when you're sad and he'll receive you. You can come to him when you're in, in a horrible sin and he'll receive you. As a matter of fact, he will always receive you and you need to understand it. So I grant peace, Lord, today. God, that people could realize you're not mad, you're not angry, Lord. You're longing for them to come, Lord God. And I pray today, Lord, may we all move up and move in in Jesus' name. Okay, so, so we're gonna start in verse one. <clears throat> it said, then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. There was something about Jesus loved people and when you love people, people will be drawn to you. Amen, Pastor, that's right. <laughs> One reason some folks don't come around some folks is because they know they're judged, they're not loved, they're judged. And I, I want to show you who does the judging usually right here. Said, then the Pharisees and the scribes, the religious crowd, come on somebody, the religious crowd, Murmured, saying, this man receives sinners. And what a horrible thing to say about Jesus. He receives sinners. Aren't you glad that he receives sinners? Aren't you glad that you can come to him just as you are? You can come broken. You can come, whatever your situation, you can come to him. And that's what was happening. Sinners was coming to Jesus, and it made the religious crowd nervous. Make them nervous, Lord. Make them nervous. <clears throat> said, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable in them, saying, I, I, I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna have three illustrations. Jesus did his teaching in stories. But I wanna tell you something, there was a meaning to the story. And, and, and this was our lesson Wednesday night, and you know, I, I know that, you know, I'm, I'm aware of that. But, but as I was, was praying and seeking the Lord yesterday. He brought me back here, so that's not, I don't have no other word other than his. I'm going to use it, what he what he showed me here. And there, there, there was three stories here. One was about a lost sheep. One about a lost coin. The other about a lost son. But every one of them had redemption in mind. All three stories are about redemption. So when Jesus is teaching, he, he came to seek and save those which were lost. But he said, what man of you having a hundred sheep if he lose one of them, doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. In our lesson the other, the other night, it asked the question, was it financially smart for him to do that? He said, well, yeah, he had to go get that one he lost. Well, according to David, when David was keeping the sheep, a lion and a bear come, so he could have lost 10 while he's going to get those. It wasn't about his finance that he went and did that. It was about that he cared for his sheep. Aren't you glad that Jesus is the great shepherd? Aren't you glad he cares for his sheep? And he'll leave the 90 and nine to come and seek you. As a matter of fact, in, in Psalm 23, I, I love that story about a sheep. It, it don't necessarily have to be a rebellious sheep. It can be a, 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 a mama sheep, heavy with lamb, and, and, and she goes off someplace and, and she just lays down to rest. 
and, and, and in the center of gravity, it gets rolled over and her feet stuck up in the air and, and, and the sun beating down on her. Think, well, what's the big deal about it? Well, in just a little while, her, her circulation will be cut off to the place if somebody doesn't find her, she is in trouble. So the shepherd, when he looked around to see that, I don't think he think, well, it's the 99's over here. No, no, he, he's not worried about that 99. He's worried about, and he named, the, the good shepherd named a lot of sheep. So he'd be thinking, where's Kim at? Where's Kim? Where's Kim? And so he sat down running up, up and down every ditch line until he finds, and when he finds them, he don't beat them with a stick. What he does, he picks them up and puts them on the shoulders and, and, and takes them back to the fold. And then it, the funny thing about it, he said, there, well, let me just read it to you. I, I don't want to tell you what it said. I, I want you to sit in your own Bible right there. It said, uh, that leaves the 99 of willing to go after that which is lost till he find it. And when he found it, he left upon his shoulders rejoicing. Now, now some folks get nervous when the church starts rejoicing. I want to tell you, you're in the dullest place you're ever going to be in when you're on earth. Because when you get to heaven, they're going to be shouting with a loud voice. They're going to be praising the King of Kings. So you better get used to it while you're here. As a matter of fact, I hope to go up on the cloud with Alan. You know, some, some folks don't like Alan yelling. I want to tell you, Alan was in prison. The Lord set him free, saved him in the hole. There wasn't no place for God to get to him, but God got to him there. And I hope we don't ever lose that fire. As a matter of fact, I hope some of us catch some of it. Hallelujah. I don't care how loud you shout, just as long as you can walk straight and you hit the ground. So when he cometh home, he called together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Now, we're talking about a four-legged sheep right here. I thought, look what Jesus said. And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than 90 and nine just persons which need no repentance. We went right from a four-legged sheep to a soul being saved. I'm telling you, this whole thing is about redemption. I, 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 want, I want to show you that, let me, let me give you a few scriptures right here. Jeremy, if uh, Romans 5 and 8, and we're, we're talking about those uh, folks that were worrying about him associating with publicans and sinners. Romans 5 and 8 said, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, that old song, Just As I Am, I come to him as a sinner. Have you ever been mad and you came to him? Have you ever been disappointed and came to him? Have you ever been hurting and came to him? Have you ever been sick and come to him? Did he ever return you away? No, he always received you. While he was yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, and Matthew 19, 13 said, Then they brought unto him little children that... He should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked him. I, I kind of thought about that verse a while ago when these little girls over here dancing, and, and, and you think, well, what's wrong with that crazy church? Them kids are just going, they was worshiping God. Amen. They had something that you could use a little bit more of. They got some joy. Amen. Well, not, let me take that back. You probably got all you can handle. I need more of that, you know, so. Hallelujah. So, so anyways, but then what did Jesus have to say? And Jesus said, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. And this is in my Bible, this is the note right there when, it, when it's worried about the sinners and the publicans coming in. Ezekiel 18, 23 says, have I pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Is he happy about the wicked going to die? He said, saith the, the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. So the Lord don't want the wicked to die. He wants him to return from his ways and live. As a matter of fact, that scripture that I read to you a while ago when it said bring all the tithes in, right ahead of that, he told them, you, you know, that, that if they want to return, he said, how shall we return? He said, will a man rob God? You've you got to return from your wicked ways. And, and, and then after, and all he said, if you'll do that, I'm going to do this, this, and this for you. Amen. Preach on, Pastor. I'm going to. And in 1 Timothy 1 and 15, he said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. This is Paul writing this. He said, Of whom I am chief. 
we all give him some pretty good competition, don't we? <laughs> well, so, so there's, there's the first one of his stories. You go right out of the story into another. He said, either that a woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece of it, do not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace that I had lost. It's just a coin. It's just a piece of silver. What could be such a big deal about it? Most scholars agree that it had something to do with the, the wedding. It, it, it was saying, I'm chosen. And those 10 pieces of coin with that one gone, it, it, was, it, it meant a whole lot to her. But I, I want to point, and, and I preached a whole message one time on this, and I'm just going to touch on it today. She didn't lose it out in the world. It was lost in the house. If I'm going to go to hell, I would rather do it from a bar stool. I would rather do it from a honky-tonk than to do it from a church pew. I don't want to be lost in the house. You understand what I'm saying? You, you know, you, you can fool a whole lot of people, but you're not fooling the Lord. So, so don't be one of them scribes or Pharisees just sitting around judging and all this. Be sure that your heart's right and, and everything's ready to go with you. She was lost. It was lost in the house, but she didn't give up till she found it. And, and here again, this is Jesus telling the story. And it says, uh, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that comes to repentance. He's hung up on this sinner thing, isn't he? Amen. Say it again, Dennis. Thank goodness he's hung up on sinners. Hallelujah. All right, now, now we're getting down to where I want to preach at. I said, uh, and there was a certain man that had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falleth to me. I want to stop right there. He didn't have the right. He was asking for his inheritance. His inheritance was not his till his daddy was dead. And what he was doing, basically, he was disrespecting his dad. I want to act as if, as if you're already dead. Or maybe in other ways, you're dead to me now. At my house, if my son had said that, it wouldn't have been me that was dead. <laughs> but the story ain't about me. It's, this is about the, a good father. <laughs> but I, I want you to grasp that. Just, just imagine, if we don't get in the pages of this Bible, if we don't let it come to where we are, you, you know, Urban just has in the, how long ago did we start this fatherhood thing? I mean, you look around and see all these, you know, but uh, it's been a short while ago. He just works in overtime. <laughs> you know, God bless them abundantly, doubled. And I keep telling them they only got four and it takes five, our basketball team. Right. But they won't listen to me. So, so but, but with all that said, just imagine, that I, if I ever saw love out of, out of some people's eyes. When I, I watch you all when I'm watching these kids. And, and, and they're thinking, is that okay? Is that okay? It's okay. It's okay. But I see love radiating out there. But can you imagine one of your children saying, you're dead to me. I can't imagine the hurt that that would bring. Yet the father's reaction was he gave him what he wanted. Sometime the Lord will give you what you think you want. Let me do it another way. You can have what you want, but it'll cost you what you got. Amen. I'm going to get down to where you think, yeah, he just don't talk about sinner. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm coming to you too. Amen. He, he, amen. Amen. I'm coming to you too. So he said, uh, give me the portion 
of goods, and, and he's a younger son, so he's entitled to one third of his inheritance. So, so he, and he divided unto, most everybody misses this, invited unto them. He had two sons. So as if he were already dead, he gave up all that he had. And his younger son took his loot and cut a trail, running from the father. Got what he wanted. And not many days after, the younger son gathered up all together and he took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance on riotous living. How many of y'all was raised in church? I mean, that's... Uh, 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 okay. How many would admit that there was times during the time you was raised that, that, that the call to the wild was calling you to say, you're missing out on something. You, you know, look at what a good time they're having. And you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. You, you know, all, all that stuff going on, I want to tell you, if you could talk to that son when he's sitting there in that hog pen, you'd been glad you didn't get to go. But he went off down to the hog pen is where he's headed. And, he, and as long as he had money, everything went good. He had a lot of friends. He was life of the party. Probably had the fastest, well, I started had the fastest car, but probably had the fastest donkey or whatever. I don't, I don't know. But, 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 but he had money. And, and, and he was living it up. But there comes a time, and, and I'm, I'm going to give you a lot of scripture for this. You can't get enough money to replace what you had at home. You're in my father's house today, and, and you may think you need to run from this place and do something that the world has got to offer you, but I want to promise you that you're going to long for the day when you can get back in his presence. Well, said, not many days after he gathered all and went into a fire camp. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the field to feed swine. Now this was, now for a Tennessee boy, that ain't no big deal. I've slopped the hogs. But for a Jew boy, that was about as low as it got to be down there and he was basically a slave to the man down there and his job was to slop the hogs. He felt alone. He felt lonely. Have you ever second guessed one of your decisions? I bet then Jerry started thinking about, I wish I could just talk to daddy just for a minute. I, I, I wish, I wish, I had listened to him when he was, I, I believe his daddy tried to talk to him before he said, son, you, you know, you're in a good place now. The Holy Spirit does that for you. you, you when you start to go thinking, I need to be over there, the Holy Spirit was like, no, 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 you're, you're in a good place now. Amen. But we're coming up that place of loneliness and despair. But let me tell you, all those kids just went out there a while ago and you wonder, should they be out there? There was something that was inbred down inside of him that when he got to his lowest spot, he knew which way to turn. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, raise your children up. Yes. And, it, and, it, and it said, when they're old, they'll come back. Amen. Well, Amen. so he called. He said, <clears throat> and when he would have fame filled his belly with the husk, that the swine did eat. And no man gave to him. I, I want to talk to you just a little bit before I get on here. When I talk about 
the deceiver, we talked about this just recently in, a, in one of the Wednesday night classes. If y'all are missing Wednesday night classes, you're missing incredible Bible studies. But, but in, in that Wednesday night class, you think, well, well, I could never be deceived like that. Well, let me give you an illustration. The only two perfect human beings that's ever been here was Adam and Eve till Jesus come. They, were, they didn't have no sin nature when they were born. And they was in a perfect environment, walking in the afternoon with a perfect God. Only one, only one, everybody say one. Only one thing that they couldn't do. And that one thing looked so good. And they had, you know, you say, well, why, why didn't God, why didn't God make it where they couldn't do that? You know, God could end sin in, in just a minute. No, 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 not that long. A, a split second. He could take away our free will and make you do what you want to do. But then he wouldn't be God. We wouldn't be serving him because we love him. They had, they had a choice. And they made their, the, the devil was so deceptive, they made that one thing look better than God, the garden, eternal life. He, he made that one thing look, and they fell. But let, let me, let me, let's go over to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Jeremy. And I'm, I'm going to read it to you out of, uh, out of the Amplified Bible. Uh, it says, uh, and I said to myself, come now, I will test you with the pleasures and gratification so you enjoy and have a good time. But behold, this too is vanity. Vanity means futile or meaninglessness. I said of laughter, it's madness, and of pleasure, what does it accomplish? I explored with my mind how the, the Myself and, and my wine at the same time, having my mind remain ready to guide me wisely and how to take control over foolishness until I could not see what was good for the sons of men to do all under heaven. I made great works. I built houses for myself. I planted vineyards for myself. I had gardens and orchards for myself. I planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. I made pools of water for myself and for which the water of the forest and, and made trees bud. I bought males and female slaves and had slaves born in my house. I also possessed herds and flocks large enough to proceed me in the, to Jerusalem. Also I collected for myself silver and gold and the treasure of the kings and prophecies. I provided for myself male singers and female singers and the delights of pleasures of men many concubines, and I became great and exalted more than all who preceded me in Jerusalem. My wisdom also remained in me. Whatever my eyes looked at with desire, I did not refuse them. I did not hold back from my heart all pleasure, any pleasure, for my heart was pleased because of all my labor and all my re reward for all my labor. Then I considered all my hands had done and labored to do, and behold, all is vanity and chasing after a wind, and there is no profit, no lasting value under the sun. So what's he saying? He talked about he had all that wine, so drinking couldn't make him happy. He had all them wives and concubines sex couldn't make him happy. You know, what he did, he went from the place where it was just him and God and God visited him in a night vision and, and he started looking outside that place. So I want to promise you there is no thing outside the presence of God that's going to bring you happiness. I want to take you back to where we've been every for the last three weeks. I can't get away from this place. So let's go back to Exodus chapter 33 for, for just a moment here. And, and you say, How, what's that got to do with the prodigal son? I hope you'll see in just a minute. You know, I, I, in Exodus chapter 33, we'll find where that, that uh, Moses, I'm going to pick up verse 1, and said, And the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and all the people you brought out of Egypt, 
and go to a land that I promised to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants. And I will send an angel to guide you and drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittites and Persiaites and the, all them ites, you know, the Hivites and the Jebusites. And you are going to a rich and fertile land, but I will not go with you because you are a stubborn people and I might destroy you on the way. Now let me tell you something. I, I want to liken Moses right now to the prodigal son. The prodigal son was sitting up there in a house with a daddy, and I'm going to show you what a kind of daddy he had. A daddy that loved him. A daddy that had, you know, the Bible says for you to provide an inheritance for your children. And his daddy had provided an inheritance for his child. And he tells him, you're as good as dead to me. But yet that daddy still loved him and never quit, never gave up on him. Moses, right the other hand, God said, I'm going to lead those children of Allah, Egypt, bondage. And God didn't give up on them. Until they, and Moses, they went through a lot of stuff. They'd been through a lot of stuff the time they got this place. And the Lord said, okay, I, you, this bunch of stiff-necked, uncircumcised heart people, I've had all I can take of them. I'm going to go ahead and clear the way out. I'm, I'm going to drive out all the inhabitants. And you're going into a good land. How many of you think, well, okay, God, let's get going right here? Y'all, man, most of us said, yes, God, let's go. But Moses said, no. No, Lord, if you don't go up, if you don't get anything else, I've said this whole time. If you don't go up, your presence means more to me than all that stuff. If you don't have his presence, if you don't have his anointing, if you don't have your relationship with him, it, you can't get enough stuff. It takes a relationship with him. Ah, well, if that didn't help you, I might as well say amen. We're going home because... I want that to sink in just a minute. Moses could have said, okay, God, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. But no, he said, if you don't go up, then don't make me leave this place. I want to stay right here where you're at. I'd rather be out here in the desert. I'd rather be out here going through all that we're going through than to go into that good land without you. Amen. The next time the devil's trying to get you to move, you better ask him, Lord, is this the way you're going? Because if you're not going, I think I'll stay here in your presence. I'll probably have this Exodus 33 story there again next week. I <clears throat> but anyway, he, he went on to, if you come on down to verse 15, and Moses replied, he said, if you do not go with us, don't make us leave this place. I, I'm, I'm reading out the Good News Bible. It said, if there is anyone, how will anyone know that you are pleased with your people and with me if you do not go with us? Your presence with us would distinguish us from all of the people on the earth. Amen. Oh, Lord. It's his presence in you that distinguishes you. It's his anointing in your life that changes things for you. It's why you can face this obstacle. It's why that you can say no to drugs. You can say no to sex. You can say no to all that stuff because it's his presence. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Thank you, Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will do what you've asked, but I know you are very well and I am well pleased with you. And then Moses said, please let me see. I, I, like, I like this translation. The dazzling light of your presence is what? The dazzling light of your presence What's he talking about? Let him see his glory. I'm not worried about Canaan land. Yes, we've been walking around here for a long time to try to get there. I'm not worried about that, Lord. Just let me see your glory. Amen. More than you need to see Canaan land, you need to see his glory. Amen. Well, hallelujah. I'm, I'm feeling this more than y'all are feeling it. Okay. <clears throat> And when he came to himself, <clears throat> verse 17, he said, how many hired servants in my father's house have bread enough to eat, bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will 
arise. Y'all remember when you made up your mind to arise? And I pray that there are going to be some people in the house today. I've sat here in this hog pen long enough. I've sat here in this time of doubt. And, or I've sat here in, in this place of grief. I've sat here in this place of anger. I've sat here in this, this unforgiveness. I've sat here in this bitterness. Lord, I've sat here long enough. So, so today, when I get a chance, I'm getting up. I will arise <clears throat> and go to my father's house. Hallelujah. I will arise and go to my father. And we'll say in him, Father, I've sinned against, I'm glad he knows that, heaven. How did he sin against heaven? He didn't honor his father. I, he said, honor your father and your mother. So I'm glad he even knows. He didn't just know he did his daddy wrong. He knew he did heaven wrong. He said, against heaven and before thee. And I'm no longer worthy to be called thy son, Hallelujah. He thought he was all that in a bag of chips when he left. He left saying, give me, give me, give me. He come back saying, make me, make me, make me. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him, and ran, and fell on his pig pen neck. I want to tell you, he done gone through all them fine linens he went down there with. He was coming home looking like a pig, smelling like a pig, and had pig in his mind. But, but the daddy, and I wish we had a higher up place, but every day since, he, I believe it, now the Bible don't say that, you just believe what you want to do, this is my message, I'm preaching this way. I believe every day he went out there and took a look around and thought, is today the day, Lord, that my son's coming home? And I, I kind of picture it long about dark. And, and could that be? Yeah, I believe that, that's, it. That's, that's my son. That's my son. That's my son. So he, he, went, he went running to his son. The boy left running from his daddy. The daddy went running to his son. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the kind of daddy he could have talked to before he left home. That's the kind of daddy he could have took some advice from. Amen. Can I finish this message? I, I, I never get finished. Can I finish this message? Uh, I'm going to talk about Aaron. I, don't let me forget the elder brother, but I'm going to stop right here and talk a little bit about it. All he was concerned about was his, her, his inheritance. And as I said before, he was entitled to his inheritance. His daddy needed to be dead. Do you know you and I have an inheritance? Our daddy has provided for us an inheritance. Let me just give you a few scriptures. Ephesians 1 and verse 11 said, In whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And in, in Colossians 3.23, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as unto the Lord and unto, unto men, knowing that the Lord, you will receive a reward of the inheritance you will for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20 and 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. You want some more? And the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. This is Ephesians 1 18. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of his glory and the inheritance of his saints? Titus 3 and 7 said, And being justified by his grace that we should be made heirs according to the promise of eternal life. Now, if you hadn't liked none of those, this is here, don't help you go home. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if it be so you suffer with him, you shall also 
be glorified together. So I'm an heir and a joint heir, and, and my tester has died. Jesus died. Let me tell you about, about our father. That father gave up all that he had. God the Father gave up all that he had. He gave his only begotten son that you and I today, down here in 2023, that we can still call on the name of the Lord and still be saved, that we can have our situations turned around, that we can get our eyes, you know, get, get that glaze off of that we can see the hope of his, his glory, that we can see his presence, that we can understand that, that he is all we need. We were saying, he's all I need. How many believe? He's all I need. Jesus. How many believe it? It's all I need. Well, Moses believed that. It worked out good for Moses. So, well, Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. Yes, he did. They saw him on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yes, he did. He just had to go in with them grumbling Jews. He got to go in all by himself. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord. Well, so we have that inheritance and, and we have something going on. So after he did that, he said, and he ran and he, he started making his little speech that I'm no longer worthy to be the called thy son. Make me as one of the hired servants. And he said, when his father saw him, he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called thy son. And the father didn't say, that's right, boy, preach it. No, he said, hey, hey, bring me the best robe. Bring me the ring and bring me some shoes. What's he doing? He wasn't about to make him no servant. He wasn't going to teach him a lesson. Most of us rednecks would say, you're going to have to learn a lesson from this boy. But... He was praying to his son, and his son understood who his daddy was now. Some of us, I, I, I think, Lord, Sister Robinson was, was my, she adopted me as a spiritual son. She got saved when she was just a, a little girl. She lived next door to the church, the first church I pastored there. And, and she got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and never, ever went back. I mean, she served the Lord. And, and I, I'm telling you, it's, it, if they had a, a spark of the Spirit moved in any place, she'd be, she sat, she always sat right here. She sat right where you're sitting. Her and, and, and Joe, Joe would sit, I mean, it wasn't in this church, but it was second row right there would be Joe and our beast. And, and just as soon as they would a, a little riffle, she'd be up shouting. One time I was preaching about Gideon and, and, and put the, put the praisers out front. I put Sister Robinson out front there, started out in church. Well, like never got around church. She shouted and danced and, and rejoiced, and, 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 and she's, but she never went back on the Lord. That's not my testimony. I'm not bragging about that, but, but I was dumb. And I bought into, I thought I needed that. But I'm telling you what I need is I need a double portion of his presence, his power, his spirit moving in us. Well, so his daddy cut him off. And he said, uh, but the father said to his servant, bring me the best robe. Not any old robe, not, not just some old rag that when I got tired of it. The best robe. And put it on him and put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf. Now why is that calf fatted? Because he'd been preparing him for this meal time for a little while. Oh, Lord. You don't believe it. I think that daddy will believe it. We're going to have a time of rejoicing one of these days. And I'm going to have this fatted calf ready. We're going to have this a party. Parties are okay. That's what them little girls did a little while ago. They are having a party. Kill it, and let's eat it and be merry. For my son was dead. Now, remember, the, the sheep, they was rejoicing in heaven. The coin, they was rejoicing in heaven. Now we're down to, to this son that come home. He said, uh, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now, I told you I was going to get to you. If I hadn't hit you so far, I'm coming for you now. Now, the elder son was in the field. And he came and drew nigh the house, and he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, 
what these things mean. And they said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed thee, fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. And he was happy and rejoicing and overcome with joy. No, that one I said, and he was angry. And he would not go in. Therefore, the father came out. I want you to get your, wrap your mind around this. Your son's been gone for all this. I don't know if it's weeks, months, or years. I don't know how long he's been gone. But he's finally home. The daddy's heart is joyful. He, they got a party going on in the house. But this redneck son of his that's lost in the house, he stayed home, but his heart wasn't right. He was in the church, but the church wasn't in him. He's sitting there in the house and the daddy had to leave the party. That's a daddy right there. That is a daddy. He could have said, what's good enough for him? He's a little redneck. I, I, you know, he could have, I, I hope redneck's not offensive to anybody. That's, I claim to be one. Uh, but he left the party because he cared about this son too. And they come out there to try to reason with him because he wanted that son in the house too. I wish I wouldn't run up and down the stage right here. I, I'm getting my exercise, I guess. I, I don't know why I do that. Put up with me. Well, he said, uh, and he said unto him, thy brother is come. And I've, well, I, mean, I, I got verse 29. And he answered to his father, lo, these many years do I serve thee neither transgressed at any time thy commandments. And yet thou hast never given me a goat, a kid, what he's talking about, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this, not my brother, thy son has come, which has devoured his living with harlots. I know none of y'all didn't. I assumed that that was true. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have telephones. He hadn't saw the younger son. His daddy didn't tell him what happened. You know why I think he thought he'd devoured it with harlots? That was what was. That's what he would have done if he'd went down there. Sometimes what comes out of your mouth reveals who you are. It tells you what your heart is. Amen. Now, you remember, I, I was setting y'all up all the Remember when I said, how many were raised in church? Maybe you never did get high on drugs. Maybe you never slept with a prostitute. Maybe you never shot a needle in your arm. But if it's in your heart, you probably still need to deal with that sin and get released from it today. Don't be lost in the house. I, I, don't, I don't care if y'all like this. Now, I'm preaching better than your amen. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not just concerned about the ones that's on the outside. I'm concerned about the ones that's on the inside. And, and it, it didn't say no place that it, anything about harlots other than that was what was in his mind. If he'd had his money went down there, he would have spent it on harlots. And he was so full of judgment you know, most of if you ask almost when you go out witnessing, when you go out trying to witness somebody, they'll all, if they'll get rid of they'll say, "Well, I don't want to go up there." That you, all you got's a bunch of judgmental people. Amen. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't nobody condemn you like your church. I'm 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 making that up because nobody told me that. But that's 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 the attitude that the world's got. That that, that all the church is going to do is try to condemn you. I'm telling you that ain't true. If it is, we need to get that out of our heart. But that's, that's what was going on with his brother. Well, so here we go. And his daddy's still trying to re reason with him. He said, and he said, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. 
It is meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this, now see, he called him, he just referred to him as thy son. He didn't refer to him. The daddy bring back this, your brother. Thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Now here's the deal. It don't tell if the son ever come in the house. It was still his. Jeremy, you can come on. It, 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 don't, it don't tell if he came in. He could have held on. And you can hold on to your judgmental spirit. You can hold on to that. We don't smoke and we don't chew and we don't go with the girls that do. I'm glad I'm not like that publican over there. I'm, I'm glad that I, I do this and I do that. You better check make sure you're not lost in the house. You, you, better, you better check your heart. You better say, Lord. So, so there's, 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 each one of these stories was meant for redemption. 